Hello and welcome to the Circular Metabolism podcast. This podcast is hosted by the Chair of Circular Economy and Urban Metabolism held by Aristide Tenasiadis and Stefan Kampermann at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. In this podcast, we talk with researchers, policymakers and different practitioners to unravel the complex aspects of what makes urban metabolism and economies more circular. On this new episode, we learn from Julie Marin the role of urban landscape design in circular economy transitions. Julie is a postdoctoral researcher at KU Leuven, funded by a Flanders Research Foundation Fellowship. One of the main assets that landscape design can bring to circular economy is to spatialize and contextualize flows, actors, and infrastructures in order to anchor the often too theoretical claims from circular economy. Julie also mentions that as urban and landscape design often embed a definition or a worldview, it's also possible to interpret from current case studies claiming to be circular, what are the main agendas or interpretations of circularity. Julie has grouped these agendas into four main categories and according to her, their identification helped to build a framework that help policymakers and practitioners to better navigate through the potential implementations of circular economy on a territory. Enjoy this episode and don't forget to visit our website www.circularmetabolism.com for the rest of our productions. Please help us improve our podcast by subscribing to your favorite app including YouTube, iTunes, Spotify or Stitcher and leave us a comment with your thoughts. Hello Julie. Hello. <laughs> uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, it's been almost a year since your... Uh, half a year. Half a yeah. year uh, <laughs> since your uh, dissertation that you successfully defended, that is named Circular Economy Transition in Flanders. Yeah. And I think I really like the subtitle and uh, we're going to have some time to unpack what the subtitle is, which is a uh, Urban Landscape Design Contribution. Yeah. Um, and so you did your research about how, I guess, urban landscape design mm -hmm. contributes to circularity and vice versa, how circularity is you know, uh, taken into account mm -hmm. when, uh, when we do urban landscape design. Mm -hmm. Is that it? First of all, perhaps what's landscape, why urban landscape design and not urban design? Yeah. What's the... Okay, well, let's say that the, the landscape comes in because it's really crucial when you talk about circularity eh? because mm. when you look at it from the big picture perspective resources they originate in landscape mm. and they end up in landscape um, eh? so you have extraction pits uh, and landfills in the end yeah. and so um, this is to my opinion one maybe sometimes overlooked um, aspect uh, in uh, what's happening mostly around circular economy we're looking a lot at Um, the, the part of the, the cycle where we are already making products with the extracted resources or reusing these things. But mm. the link to landscape is to me really crucial uh, in this circular economy transition if we want to approach it really in a systemic uh, way. So landscape, something like hinterlands would be your understanding of it. Like, or because, so it's, I, I like the urban uh, landscape because it kind of, also takes away the, the limits of the yeah. urban, yeah. Uh, but then it kind of blends it yes. into a, yes. where is the city, where does the city voilà. stop, where does well, it start? Well, in the case start? of Flanders, it's yeah. a bit difficult to, to, to talk about this distinction mm. eh, because mm. we're talking about the, the, the nebulous condition in which the urbanization is almost everywhere mm. and nature and, and urbanization are really intertwined. Um, in urbanism, we call it the, the horizontal metropolis. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this word hinterland, um, yeah, is a whole debate in itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it's true. It's really about this relation between urbaniz urbanization and resources. And in there, for me, landscape is really yeah, like uh, a base component if, if we start thinking about that relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, so... What have you learned about what urban landscape design can contribute yes. to circularity? And we'll talk about later if it's specific to Flanders or this yes. type of urbanization patterns, yeah. as you mentioned, or not. So I would say that the main thing um, would be that uh, urban landscape design really has this capacity to spatialize and to contextualize um, 
circular economy transition or circularity. Um, so with spatialized, I mean, um, if you look at, for example, mappings, uh, you can really um, um, map these places where uh, products are being uh, extracted, um, uh, used to, to make products, where they circulate, etc. And um, I, I, I often see in circular economy um, very little of, of that, of that's mm. um, really that anchoring in, um, in the landscape. So that's one thing, the, the spatialization. And, and this one, what I, yeah. I kind of know why, but yeah. wh what does it really help? I mean, could we just have, because the other type of circularity, I guess, is just business models. Yes, yeah. And so business models, you don't, it's the same as you say, I mean, you're going to say contextualize afterwards, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, but yeah. Um, it could be the same in Amsterdam and in yes. Brussels and yeah. anywhere. But so what if we know that over there is a wastewater treatment plan? What does it help us in the um, interventions of uh, circularity, perhaps? Yes. So, so by drawing it, by mapping it, by um, understanding um, the relations, the spatial relations of this water treatment plant to its surroundings, mm. to also the actors that are involved in its daily operations, uh, etc. Um, this question becomes really a site-specific question. And um, if you really want to um, implement and realize circularity on the ground, then that's the type of information you will need. Mm. So I think that's where urban design can really play a, a role in um, in, in, in this whole network of expertise that is starting to build around circular economy, it's really on one hand in the spatializing and in the contextualizing. And um, so the contextualizing yeah. is, is this, as you say, like the, is for that the actors? On one hand, it's the, the spatial contextualization as well. Um, um, so basically, uh, in one sentence, uh, how um, these flows, these material flows are really anchored in a territory. Mm. Yeah? So this can be, like you say, in an infrastructure, but also in a place where it's, it's uh, being sourced or, or voila, where people use it. Um, that's one thing. But then also, of course, these actors, eh, that's so crucial to understand uh, who is uh, turning the buttons of all these mm. um, flows. And um, there as well, um, in urban design, um, it, by, by anchoring or connecting these actor networks to the spaces where these flows are happening, you make it a very uh, a more tangible and concrete question, uh, which in the end, if you want to realize it on the ground, um, is quite crucial. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so I'm interested, you mentioned the word specialization. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of curious already if you have an if you prefer this word from territorialization and if it's different, because I, uh, when we talk about urban metabolism, I kind of have a, a, this idea of spatialization is where you map things mm -hmm. and territorialization is when it, it's anchored on the ground. But I don't know if there is really a difference between those two words yeah. and do you use them alternatively or? Yes, so um, maybe spatialization could be more neutral. I would say it mm. could be also be territorialized or not. Mm -hmm. But I guess you refer there to Sabine Barle and, and this idea of, of territorial ecology that yeah. is more taking into account socio socioeconomic um, context yeah. and, and, and doesn't um, approach the question of urban metabolism as, a, as an, uh, an, an isolated question, but mm -hmm. in relation to all these territorial interdependencies. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I, I, if I uh, use the word um, territoriality, I would refer to that frame okay. of reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And speciality would more be of an uh, analytical. Yes. Um, voila, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so y you mentioned that <coughs> uh, at a certain moment, based on different agendas of circularity, we can also have different specializations yes. of circularity. Yeah. What type of agendas do you have in mind? I mean, what yeah. are the, is that different definitions of uh, circularity or is it a different vision? So I guess mm -hmm. they, they go hand in hand. Yeah. So where, where this really comes from is as a designer, uh, you are asked to design a circular economy or circularity in a concrete place or, or space. Um, and then what you design always um, embeds uh, a, a definition or a notion of what is for you sustainability. Mm -hmm. So I really had to dig into that because um, 
depending whether you see sustainability or, or circularity really as a calculation exercise in which you make you close the circle and mm -hmm. there's zero waste um, or uh, that's that's for example the agenda I call to optimize um, so circularity as optimizing flows making them resource efficient um, the example there would be a city like Mazdar city okay yeah where, uh, if you read about it, they've done all the calculations, they have the certificates. It's the first, the world's first zero waste, zero energy city. But then the question that comes to my mind is, but we built this city in the middle of a former desert. Um, and, um, bonjour, in a former desert. And um, it's not very well connected to the existing city, uh, Abu Dhabi. So there's uh, initiatives such as bike sharing systems that were implemented, but then abandoned because there was not really a bicycle network connecting to the actual city. Or culture, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, voila, no. or, a, or a culture. Um, so in that sense, it's circularity for, uh, it re responds to a number of um, criteria in terms of resource efficiency, but how, um, uh, how um, circular is it really if you think of circularity as reducing pressure on natural resources because you are developing a piece of land that was an ecosystem uh, before. Mm. Uh, so that would be one, one end of the spectrum. Um, and uh, the other end of the spectrum uh, would be um, where you see circular economy uh, as uh, a way to really um, yeah, change the world, uh, to democratize um, um, how material flows are now um, distributed and redistributed. In terms of today, um, there's quite some monopolies about resource extraction and mm -hmm. there's so the money, the, the, uh, the surplus value of these natural resources that are in the end everybody's uh, in, in a common world. Um, they or are nobody's. Well, yeah, or yeah, nobody's, yeah. or nobody's, yeah, yeah voila, <laughs> that's even better, yeah, nobody's. Um, uh, so there are also movements uh, such as Rurban, for example, um, that really take this very explicit political position to see these initiatives in, on a community level where you start taking ownership of the water that falls on your roof and of the nutrients in your local soil as a common and as a way to redistribute this common uh, in, in society. But those two um, sustainability prepositions uh, as designers, mm. you have to be aware of when you're designing, which agenda are you implicitly or explicitly um, bringing uh, to, to life. So the four agendas eh, on the one <laughs> end of the spectrum, which is then more the objectivist end of the spectrum, where like the, the spatial practitioner um, is, is really acting from the outside, uh, looking at the sites uh, from the outside. You have to optimize flows, such as the drive, which is the main driving agenda of Mazdar City, for example. Then you have to innovate with flows, which is really more, um, as what you referred to earlier, um, this idea of new business models that are circular, new types of networks, logistic chains, uh, etc. That, of course, have a very spatial footprint and can transform cities. Uh, but then on the other end of the spectrum, which is what Philippe van den Broek calls the constructivist part, mm -hmm. this is where the, the spatial practitioner really um, considers himself as an observer in an existing world and works with this from within this existing world. You have on one hand the contextualizing uh, agenda, which is really looking at um, existing natural structures, resource uh, stocks, etc., actor networks, to work from that as the base resource for circularity. And then the last one is to democratize flows, which is this agenda, uh, for example, uh, in projects such as Rurban, very community driven and explicitly political about circular economy as a paradigm for um, redistributing um, this common uh, yeah, resource, resources that the world, uh, the and nature is offering. And for, for this, I'm, of course, quite curious, what are the, um, how do we choose from them as well? I mean, imagine you are uh, a policymaker, a politician or whatnot, yeah. and you have those four quadrants. Yeah. And you're like, w what is best for me? Well, so this is a conversation that uh, we then need to have, right? Mm. Because um, I do not determine uh, this is the best agenda. Mm. Um, but uh, what I do with these four agendas is offer a framework in which a conversation about this can take place. 
And uh, of course, as an, uh, from my um, disciplinary background as an urban landscape designer, the contextualizing agenda is the one that, that is more my, my expertise. Yeah. But the goal of this um, framework is really to give a, a basis uh, to policymakers, to practitioners, um, for example, when they write briefs on th that they want uh, an urban design or a project that needs to be uh, circular, mm. to have uh, a starting point of starting to define for themselves what are these values that they attach to that, what are these agendas that they really want to see in there. Yeah. Um, so on one hand, for the policymakers, and on the other hand, for designers as well, to be more explicit about what uh, type of circularity or which agendas that they are um, prioritizing in their designs. There's a, a huge difference spatially between a Mazar city and a, 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 a bottom-up um, initiative such as Urban in, in uh, the Paris periphery. So, but, yeah. but I'm curious because, of course, there are some things that you can do at the very local level, yeah. at the very community level. Uh, there are some things that you can probably not do, uh, recycling or, mm -hmm. you know, a bit scaling up economy. And I guess, the, you know, to, to have a, to really kind of reuse the materials we have in the stock and to prevent from import and export, mm -hmm. you probably need a bit of both yes. in, in a way. So you're always, I guess, in That's this the nebulous... Whole thing. That's yeah. the whole thing with this, with this um, spectrum as well. It is not one or the other. Mm. It is finding the right balance depending on the situation, the context, the actors, the, the whole complexity of the real world, um, to find the, the balance that fits um, uh, the case. Um, and there, of course, um, there, there ideally you have uh, many, many discussions about uh, these four quadrants mm -hmm. and uh, you have uh, really thought through what are the values that you want to embed with this change in your city or in your, uh, yeah. So th this would be, let's say, the, because would that be then the urban landscape design contribution to circularity to kind of spatially uh, chew on circularity and kind of say, hey, your circularity, what does it mean? And wh where do we put it? And what is it? And how are you going to plan your city, actually? Yeah. So I guess this is already very much for, as you said, territorializing or spatializing or anchoring circular economy because mm -hmm. it's not an abstract circular yeah. economy anymore. But then is, in a way, to, to provide to policymakers, urban designers, any, uh, to how do we take this abstract concept, how do we put it on the ground, and what are the you know, parameters to work with? Because mm -hmm. I guess the, from policy to operation, operation, there are some parameters that you don't think of. And perhaps this urban landscape design could help with that? Or? Yes, it could help along the way to, to test certain um, possible outcomes, right? Like um, urban landscape design is really um, about uh, engaging with uh, an existing site, an existing context, uh, mapping all these things, making it very visual and accessible. And um, you can, uh, on one hand, a very important um, strength is the ability to, um, to graphically represent the existing situation mm. and everything that is embedded in the territory that actually is relevant to circular economy transition. So that's one thing. But then also to project forward what could be mm. um, a, a spatial outcome of uh, circularity. But then this second question is very important to be very conscious about the sustainability framing that you attach uh, to that. And of course, every designer has its uh, own worldview uh, in that. But um, uh, my, by making these four agendas explicit, at least we can have a conversation around mm. that. And we are not, Ali, for me, what I, what I still uh, experience a lot when we talk about circular economy, um, it's a term that we need to further discuss. Okay, we use circular mm. economy, but what does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? And so with these four agendas, uh, the aim is to start um, offering like uh, a clear vocabulary to mm -hmm. then dig out uh, that question uh, when it comes to spatial questions. That's uh, basically the thing. And if, let's say, this is the contribution of urban landscape design to a circular economy, what would be the circularity contribution 
to the profession of urban designer or urban lands uh, or landscape uh, architect or yeah. uh, what the circularity has brought to to, to these fields mm -hmm. well maybe to come back to your previous mm -hmm. question um, the, urb uh, the urban landscape design contribution or contributions. Mm -hmm. One other thing is also this um, question that in the end, um, circularity at the scale of a city or a region will need to be supported with new infrastructures. And it is exactly that, that uh, urban landscape design can, can project uh, mm -hmm. what, what these new infrastructures could, um, uh, could, could be. Could be. Uh, and this is not just physical infrastructure eh, where that facilitate uh, resource exchanges and that are taking into account natural structures in the whole holistic picture of resource management. Eh? Uh, so not just circular economy as an economy in the business realm, but as a, a way of um, understanding or regulating how resources flow through the territory. Um, so one hand is the physical infrastructure, but there's also the organizational infrastructure. Mm. Um, and so these scenarios um, in concrete cases where you project forward to what could circularity mean in this case or in that case, they also um, bring to the table um, new types of organizational infrastructures that are currently missing. Yeah? Um, so kind of a governance. Governance, asking, you, you yes. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. but in this case, um, it's, it's very, very concrete. Like, for example, in Houthala, we... Um, um, looked at um, the mining subsidence areas where there is um, water continuously being pumped away. So it's considered as a waste. It costs money to keep these areas dry. But there's also water scarcity in certain areas. So if you just start making the, the logical connections, um, you could actually um, have a more healthy metabolism uh, mm. there, water metabolism. But then you would have to have uh, completely new um, collaborations between the agencies who are currently managing these different um, flows and, and systems. And so that's what I mean with organizational infrastructure. So breaking through silos. Yeah, um, I but can imagine, yeah. But what urban landscape design in, in the, in the case-based way then does is not saying, OK, conclusion, we need to break through silos. But if we want to realize this, then this, ne this agency needs to sit around the table with that agency. So it makes it actually very, very concrete. Yeah. So. Yeah. If, if we go back to, I think, for urban, I mean, I, I did uh, architecture engineering and then mm -hmm. urbanism, and I think circularity, well, urban metabolism taught me a lot as what my profession could and should do. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think or what did it bring to you as well as, a, as an addition to you as a practitioner, let's yeah. say, even if you don't necessarily work in practice, what do you think it adds to the profession? Circular economy. Yeah. 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 I, I, I um, thought about that question. Um, for me, it's actually a way to um, to get all all this relevant expertise to deal with um, with the issues of resource scarcity, etc. Mm. Um, to to get that more integrated in design eh? because design can be very um, mind opening and inspiring etc um, but but then um, well of course to really uh, Ali, uh, go to to realization etc um, you need to get into into um, all these other uh, expertise that are more quantitative etc um, and I think there there can be really a, a good uh, a good match um, but uh, yeah, yeah, kind of a difficult question. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I also find it uh, a bit of the same thing is understanding the physicality, of course, of our mm -hmm. of our cities, mm -hmm. of our economies, and this is a. I mean, it seems obvious, but it it really changes everything mm -hmm. around us. Yeah. If you see this building as as materials and not as it f not only its function. Yeah. Uh, you kind of have, for me, it added like different, um, how you call it, um, dimensions in, you know, your radar plot that you have to, to, to be able to, to offer um, an answer or a solution. Yeah. So it's, there are 10 to 20 parameters more that mm -hmm. are brought to the table and are equally as important as uh, well-being as mm -hmm. I don't know what and yeah. it kind of complexifies a lot the 
the story and beforehand well architects are still very uh, able to, to deal with complex issues but yeah. engineers not uh, not necessarily I mean they, they provide an answer to us to, to, to a question but now the questions are so many that you're like yeah, yeah. what are we doing yeah well maybe the the reflection on that question for me was more from my uh, the training I did as urban designer after uh, engineering architecture and there I really uh, I think a, s a strong um, influence there uh, is, is the notion of systemic design mm. uh, that is in, in landscape architecture or regenerative design from earlier um, is, is quite um, common uh, so the idea that every um, every intervention on a local scale is connected to bigger systems, the, the hydrological system, yeah. um, materials that are extracted somewhere to realize what you're doing. So uh, this notion, I think, is very much embedded. It's, it's one of the core things of urban design or urban or landscape architecture more okay, even. Perhaps, yeah. Yeah. And so in that sense, um, Ali, the, the, the circular economy, uh, Ali, the addition of the circular economy discourse, which was new to me when I mm -hmm. started this this research, is is really I do the, the 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 exchange is really that that this approach or the urban landscape design uh, urban landscape design approach helps to anchor uh, this circular economy notion in landscape and territory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's. Well, I guess also at businesses and at you know the actors and all. Well, mm -hmm. actors perhaps you was already there, but. The, the kind of business approach and the policy approach, yes, I, I kind of find yeah. it a, a, a lot of uh, information and a lot of things to it's to everywhere, integrate. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, urban landscape design, I see it really as a, a possible facilitator of mm. to integrate all these different things. That's also for the the research that I that I will further develop. I want to increasingly uh, work across disciplines, adopting the design approach, urban landscape design approach, as a facilitator, a mediator to understand really um, the methods and um, uh, of, of all these approaches and to, to, to start integrating them, because I think that's our next challenge. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps to, to finish off, you, yeah. you, meant you already have a, a couple of case studies under your belt so that you were there and you kind of saw what happened mm -hmm. and uh, you kind of saw the complexities. What would be for you the, the ideal uh, case study um, of an existing city that you would say that's where I would like, I, I see so many challenges, that's where all of my knowledge and you know what I've developed over these years would be very helpful to kind of twist something or change something or you know a case study that really appeals you and that you would like to work on. Is there any city that you well, for me, I think the, the criteria for that ideal case study would be that there is uh, a political will mm. to take the question of circular economy transition in the city seriously. So to really um, wanting to go through this discovery process of the four agendas and which values uh, you want to uh, embed in this transition, that, that would be my... So I, I'm not thinking of a, a concrete case that I have in mind. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more drafting like my <laughs> ideal case. And to then uh, yeah, have an openness in those who are on the terrain um, uh, to trying to do it, uh, to go through a, a common learning process that can be um, supported by um, forward-looking urban landscape design, uh, but in, in this, this notion of... Uh, well, that, that it's an uncertain future, that, mm. that is a process of discovery, this so-called wicked problem, um, that would be uh, the ideal case. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> hope it's going to be uh, <laughs> Flanders or, or Brussels very soon. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. Okay, thank you. <laughs>Thank you for listening or watching our podcast episode till the end. If you like this episode, if you have unanswered questions, if you agree or disagree with what was said during this episode, please leave us a comment to spark a debate. Thanks again and see you in the next episode.